Hello guys and welcome back to our channel. Today we will carry on with our comic narrative series of Marvel Comics Timeless. In the last part we saw how Dr. Petrov met Kang and how Kang took Petrov with him to his numerous adventures in the universe and ultimately came back to the Oracle base where they could see every timeline happening in real time. There, they saw a sudden appearance of a wild or pirate timeline has caused chaos among the other timelines and so Kang with Petrov went to the timeline to discover the reason behind it. So without wasting any more time in our timeline, let's start with the video. After defeating those deathlocks, he goes to the pirate or independent timeline with Petrov and says that he will deal with the deathlocks leader afterwards. But there were more coming in the facility, so Petrov asks Kang that you left your servants to die, you could have saved them. To which Kang gets all fired up and tells Petrov, who do you think you're traveling with? I am Kang the Conqueror. The lives lost on Oracle base are the barest fraction of the death tally upon my name. I have seen millions die in my name and millions more die causing it. Do you think me misunderstood Petrov, a hero merely waiting for the opportunity to bloom? The only thing is deserve excellence Petrov at any cost. This is my obsession. Do you understand now? Petrov was terrified at the moment and said, Yes, I don't like you Kang. I don't know if I respect you, but I understand you. Petrov then asks that where are they to which Conqueror replies precisely where we want to be. And we see that they have arrived in the year 20,208, where Kang says the end of the world, or rather the end of this one. Now in the background we see the dead bodies of the Celestials are lying around. Petrov then asks that if Doom is the person responsible, then he is extremely powerful and how can you even challenge him? To which Kang says, Doom is Doom, no matter the timeline, just as I am Kang, and Kang will always be Doom's better. He further says that as he opens the door to the main control room, now prepare yourself Petrov for either Kang triumphants here and the main timeline is safe or we all perish. I have come Victor, it will be my pleasure to kill you. And we all see that behind that door is Doom himself. To which Doom says, Victor, as if questioning. Then he says while removing his mask, Kang, of course, forgive me. You are here to stop me from reattaching this timeline to the main timeline. And by saying this, he removes his mask and we see that it's not Victor Von Doom. It's Reed Richards, aka Mr. Fantastic. So what the heck? I wasn't the whole world expecting this. Richard then continuing by saying, if you have come to kill Victor, I'm afraid you're too late. He was the one, first one I murdered. Kang was shocked. I mean, who wouldn't? When we see Reacher's eyes, we see that instead of his eyes, there are two infinity stones. Reed then tells what happened to his timeline. He tells that everything happened very fast. At first they thought that the heroes, including him, would save everything and everyone, but soon they realized that they couldn't stop it, their timeline was still dying slowly. And he added by saying, the world lost hope. Do you know what happens to a society without hope, Kang? Total collapse. Reed continues by saying, I never lost hope, not for the world. I would do anything to save this world. And after this, we hear most definitely one of the best lines in Marvel comics, where he tells, I replace my eyes with the time and reality stones to force my will upon the timeline. I killed celestials and drank their blood to take the power for myself. Which means, Reed was holding this pirate timeline from getting destroyed by using the infinity stones which are now his eyes. Then he says, I destroyed anyone who raised even their voice against me and my mission. My mission to save this timeline. After all that, no matter how well intentioned my actions were, what else I could be called but Doom? 
He says this as he wears Doom's iconic mask. Just after this, we see Kang jumping into the action and using all his advanced tech weapons where Doom, I mean Richards, quite easily deflects his attacks and overpowers Kang. During the fight, they both have a conversation where we understand that Reed is literally the last living person in the universe of this timeline. Reed tells that he will correct this timeline to which Kang says it cannot be corrected. This timeline will crash into the main timeline and all will be destroyed. Then he asks Reed, you are sacrificing everything to prove yourself right? You truly are a Doom. Then we see a fight sequence between Kang and Doom where Kang uses all his futuristic weapons and Doom uses godly powers of Celestials and Infinity Stones. While all this is happening, we see that Petrov is telling us about Kang's character and what he feels and does in the background. Petrov says, Kang will not correct others who think him as a god. He has even called himself a god in the past. A god has no limitations, which they might exceed, while a man has many, and this is more interesting to the conqueror. A man strives, a man risks, a god does neither of those things. God commands man, but a man challenges God, and one of those actions is more worthy than the other. But can this man kill this God? Can anyone? By saying these things, Petrov tells about Kang's character, as well as what is happening at that moment, which is Doom versus Kang, where Doom, or Richards, has gained cosmic powers and is a God, where Kang is merely a human with weapons. As Petrov completes, we see the Kang cannot do anything to stop Doom and Doom even destroys Kang's all arsenal of weapons that he was keeping in Peen Space or Quantum Realm. Kang still tries his best and keeps fighting but Richard says, The blood of Celestials crackle in my veins, I see through fragments of universal power may be dying. And after saying that, grabs Kang's neck and tells him, any last words, Kang? To which Kang replies, I knew you were always going to become a tyrant, weren't you? No wonder historians believe we are related. Doom says, Kang, I am not going to kill you as a god. You are not worth it. I am going to kill you as a man because I am better than you are. And Doom puts his power aside and tries to kill Kang with his manly power saying, I am you, but better. But suddenly, he screams. Kang also couldn't believe his eyes. Petrov struck Doom from behind with a spear through Doom's heart, instantly killing him. Kang gets angry and tells Petrov that does he think he can aid the conqueror and asks Petrov that does he know the meaning of this. To which Petrov answers, I know that you will kill me for it. So Kang asks him then why he did it. Petrov replies that if Doom killed Kang then he would have died anyway and his timeline would have been at risk. He also says that he believes Kang should put himself before others to save others who are unable to save themselves. And he also believes that true human greatness lies in putting oneself before others. To which Kang laughs and tells Petrov that their time together is finished and Kang will put him back in his time shortly after he was taken by Kang. Petrov doesn't understand what Kang meant, so Kang tells him that it is still his victory and he brought Petrov as one of his weapons. Doom or Richards, they have their arrogance and this was all to plan. This is the very reason I keep traveling companions. I like being challenged. Kang then praises Petrov by saying, you stood up to me knowing I would most likely kill you. This is the kind of courage I will always have admired in humanity. That is the element that makes our species worthy than what humanity possesses, that has allowed it to produce Kang. And he concluded by saying, but if you continue to write about Doom, I will come back and kill you. Classic Kang is all I would say. And the last page shows Petrov in the present time where Kang has left him in his office. Just after some time, he vanished with Kang previously. You can see that Petrov is writing his book and is saying, Kang kept his word and returned me just as he promised, but since he returned me, I've thought for a long time. Did Kang really plan and anticipated 
that I would strike Doom just after he created an opening when Doom was distracted. It seems outlandish even if Kang has anticipated, but it's still not impossible. Petrov thinks of many other possibilities, he even thinks that have he and Kang become friends, but he says that he will never know. He continues by saying, these seven days have been the most harrowing of my life. I saw the conqueror dispense any number of deaths and worse. I killed a man. I killed Doom. I mean, this is an irony. Petro was writing about Doom and praising him in his book, but ultimately he killed the Doom with his own hands. Now back to Petro. He says that, what stays with me the most are the visions of the potential futures we saw on Oracle Base. With the pirate timeline destroyed and the main timeline stabilized, how much have I seen will come to pass? And why is this particular vision imprinted on my mind? As we see a symbol of MM drawn on his book. And the comic ends. But in the last page of the comics, we see a page where it is written Judgment Day is coming. This is most probably Marvel Comics' highly anticipated upcoming new big event in comics. Thus, our comic narrative series Marvel Comics Timeless came to an end. Before leaving, tell us how much you liked our narrative of these comics and are you excited for the future of Marvel Comics with Judgment Day close to our doorsteps in the comments down below. If you like this video, make sure to like it as it encourages us a lot to upload more content consistently and don't forget to subscribe to be notified about our upcoming content in future. So stay safe, stay curious and stay nerdy. We will meet you in the next video. Till then, bye bye.